Um, so this is an image from my sketchbook. Uh, it is an image that I have recreated with acrylics from latent space. Uh, what is latent space? It's another term for the vector space of all possible images created with a GAN model. Uh, the GAN model I'm using in particular is Big GAN, uh, which I discovered through Janelle Shane's blog, AI Weirdness. Uh, and I use the tool GAN Breeder, which was created by Joel Simon, which is one of the best UIs I've experienced for non-coders to explore Big GAN. Uh, I'm not going to uh, do a long explanation of Big N. I'll explain it in very simple terms and then talk more about the tool. Um, but basically, all these images from ImageNet were classified into different categories. Then those categories are turned into models. So a computer can generate what a typical volcano is or a typical golden retriever is. There's a thousand categories. Not only can it do individual categories, but it can merge categories together. So I can take a hypothetical volcano and a hypothetical golden retriever, and I can create a volcano golden retriever. Uh, and it can generate thousands of these, even more. Uh, and I can add even more genes. So I can add a barometer, and it makes my volcano dog kind of like more round. Uh, or I can add a jellyfish, and it makes it more fiery, um, and add sort of like a blue tint, like it's underwater. And you can tweak all these parameters. So I sort of feel like this is, um, paint, like the different genes are paint, and I can create anything in latent space using these different genes. Uh, but I'm not really creating it, I'm more like discovering it, because uh, this contains, uh, I mean, like almost infinite possible vectors that contain a different combination of genes. Uh, just to explain more about how this is like a vector, this is a typical volcano, but then I can go to opposite of volcano, so I can do negative volcano, and it turns into something like a wine bottle. And this is hard to imagine, but it's sort of like this four-dimensional graph um, where each point is this crazy image. Um, so I just wanna like go through how crazy this world is. I view this world as its own civilization uh, with its own artwork and literature and landscapes. Um, there's these crazy trees. There's all these different climates. There's artwork. Uh, I'm just projecting that this is a sculpture, even though it's a combination of a bunch of different genes. Uh, there's strange stuffed animals. There's diagrams that seem like it's trying to explain something to me, but it's sort of nonsensical. Uh, there's products. This is probably a combination of 40 different genes. Uh, there's plants, or maybe this is a vegetable. Uh, there's technology. Uh, there's science equipment. Uh, there's transit systems. This is a hypothetical boat. This world is infinite. I have spent many hours in it. <laughs> Weird rocks, <laughs> artwork. This looks like a watercolor painting to me. Um, dogs. Uh, and its own sort of like Pinterest. <laughs> There's uh, in weird interior decoration. So a lot of these things could be used as inspiration for many creative fields. Um, this is a very interesting category, plaques. It, uh, so it does an interesting thing with, with words where it turns it into this hypothetical language. Uh, and it seems, it seems like it has content in there. If I zoom in, it seems like it's trying, it's like trying to tell a story, but I'm just projecting that it's intelligent. Um, uh, these sort of look like yoga poses to me. So I did a uh, big gan yoga with a group of friends where I tried to interpret the different, uh, it's like a combination of genes and we tried to actually turn them into yoga poses. So clearly I'm obsessed with, I'm obsessed with big gan. Uh, I just showed it to some friends last night and then we both, we all spent two hours on it. I love big gan so much that I turned this into a service where anyone can create uh, I create a painting for people based on the image that they find. They send me the link. And then I um, take this super low res image and then use more AI to sort of imagine more pixels uh, using Let's Enhance. Um, and then even that doesn't look like a painting. So I use paint and I look at all the parts of the, the printed piece that look digital and try to like cover it with paint so you can't tell that it was digital. Uh, that image, and, and these, are, these are ones that I've created, um, but anyone can uh, submit a link. Uh, the one on the right, I think, is a combination of a bird and an oxygen mask and a few other genes mixed in. Uh, and I'm not the only one who's thought to take things from the world 
of Gan Breeder and make them physical. Uh, but this is a super, this is complicated because I don't feel like I own the images or the people creating the artwork owns the images because they all exist and we're sort of just discovering it. Um, I am especially interested in copyright stuff because as an artist, I've received lots of cease and desists for <laughs> derivative works. Uh, and all of these are arguable, but I've never actually like had a, had, I haven't had like an actual uh, legal dispute over these things. Uh, this uh, image on the left is, um, I got a cease and desist from US Game Systems who owns the copyright of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, but they own the copyright on the photos of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, which is actually originally illustrated in 1909 before, before uh, copyright law existed, so that's questionable. This is from the MC Escher estate, even though it's like inspired by Escher and I invented more details, I still got a cease and desist. I got a cease and desist from the Giacometti Foundation uh, for recreating his sculptures for a play about Giacometti, which was like celebrating his life, but they still had issue with the fact that someone tried to copy it. Uh, and uh, this, so this stuff is, uh, it's, all those previous cases are, there's laws about this stuff, and we could have a court case about it, and someone would be a winner. But with, but with Gans, it's like so hard to trace who actually owns the image. Uh, if you saw this tweet, it was semi-viral. Uh, this tweet has 34,000 retweets, 80,000 likes. Name one thing in this photo. Well, you can name one thing in this photo. This photo comes directly from Big Ann, but no one knew. Even all the journalists that wrote about it are like, maybe this image is from 10 years ago because the resolution is low. Like, no one knew that it came from Big Ann because it's impossible to search, right? Like, you can't do, if there's mil, if there's, I think 30 million images were created just using Gan Breeder. Uh, and it's impossible to just like find an image on the internet and search through all that. I mean, it's possible, but it's just difficult. And that's not going to be running all the time. Like there can be a Google search alert for an image, but if someone creates a, uh, like, uh, a stuffed animal that comes from the universe of Gan Breeder, there isn't going to be like, it's, no one's going to be alerted, right? So, uh, I got particularly lucky or maybe unfortunate one day where I was on Twitter and I saw this very recognizable image that I had created using Gan Breeder. I tweaked all the genes and made this weird blob thing on the left. And then I saw that an artist had uh, got this painted in China and then had an art show with all this AI art, but um, the, the way he created it was not referenced at all. And so I was sort of upset, and as you do on Twitter, you, uh, uh, the way to be upset is to be extreme. So like I said, you stole my image. And other people saw this tweet, and then they found their own images, because uh, the Gan Breeder community uses Twitter. Um, and other people said, wait, that's something I created. And they could, they could find the particular moment that they bred that gene, but then there's the argument like, wait, you created it, but it was publicly available, and there's no rules, and the creator of the code didn't have any rules. Um, so something that I do is I worked out with Joel before I even started printing pieces is that I, I said, I will give you 15% of all sales, and we had a long conversation. And I think it's important if you're an artist uh, and want to use someone's code, just like call up the person writing the code and be like, hey, here's what I'm doing. How do you want to deal with sales? Like, is it even cool if I use your code? Like, tell me what you want out of this because there's currently uh, no laws about it. Um, this is, if you have thoughts on, on this stuff or want to talk about AI art, um, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, the worst place to contact me is Twitter <laughs> because it's hard to actually have a conversation there. Uh, so you can join my dial-up line, which is a, a phone, a recurring phone call where you're connected randomly to another person in the AI art community, and you can discuss this stuff on the phone. So that's the link. <laughs>